Hey guys, after what feels like a lot of just farting around, we're finally to the point where we're going to start working on the mill itself. The way that I did my conversion was to completely finish the X and Y axis and then use the CNC X and Y to make the brackets and other parts for the Z. And that worked pretty well, so I'll be rolling the videos out kind of in the same order. The first thing that I did was just loosen up the uh, gib adjustment screws on the x-axis just to make things move around a little bit easier. And then you'll need to remove one of the hand wheels on the x. Uh, I chose to remove the hand wheel on the right simply because I had more room to remove the table towards my left. And uh, the hand wheel comes right off with just an acorn nut and a lock washer. Underneath the hand wheel is a woodruff key and mine was jammed in there really tight. I actually had to sharpen a punch on my lathe. Uh, so I could get underneath the woodruff key and dig it out. And I actually stabbed myself in the finger uh, really hard. Uh, be careful when you're working with sharp stuff, guys. Uh, safety first, right? You'll also need to remove this outer bearing race. And I have one of these cheap Harbor Freight bearing puller sets, so that's what I used. But you could probably work at it with a couple of screwdrivers or a chisel or cut it off if you have to. Uh, just get it out of the way, and then you can remove the table end cap which just takes a couple of screws and there are also a couple of dowel pins so you want to make sure that you don't lose any of that stuff. Uh, I used a brass drift to drive mine right off and yeah, it came off pretty easily. If you're nervous about losing any of that stuff now would be a good time to start organizing things with Ziploc bags. The next thing I did was completely remove the gib adjustment screws. Uh, you could possibly leave the left one in because when I was running the table all the way off, as I got to the end, the gib actually wedged itself between the table and the saddle. So I had to screw the table back on a little bit and then get my hand on the gib and then screw the table back off. And uh, I was able to remove the gib that way and then everything came apart, no problem. If I had left that left side screw in, it may have kept the gib uh, protruding a little bit so I could get it with my fingers and, I don't know, could have saved me a minute. Anyway, uh, once you get the table out of the way, we can start working on the saddle. And the first thing you'll need to do is just remove the two screws that hold the chip guard onto the saddle. This will give you access to a couple of uh, cap screws on the back side, and that's what holds your Y-axis lead screw nut in place. I removed the, f the uh, front side gib adjustment screw, and then I had to go ahead and pull the uh, this Y hand wheel spacer. And the reason is I didn't have a stubby screwdriver handy, so I couldn't get around to the backside screw. Uh, when you undo that spacer, it'll allow you to slide the saddle forward a little bit, and then you can get back there with a regular screwdriver and get that rear gib adjustment screw out of the way. Then just uh, crank the hand wheel until the lead screw is all the way out, and you can set that aside. Then we'll start working on the, uh, the two cap screws on the back side of the saddle. And I think I removed mine all the way, but you really only need to loosen these up, and that will allow this Y-axis nut to drop out of the slot. And to see, as soon as I loosen up that uh, second screw, you'll see that nut drop right out of place. So pretty easy, and then you can just slide the saddle right off the table, or uh, off the base, and you're done. If you're going to be upgrading to ball screws, you're probably going to need to do some clearance to the saddle like I'm doing. Uh, the ball screw nut, or ball nut I guess, is too big to fit between the saddle and the table. So I'm taking about 200 thousandths out of, uh, out of this little area. And I can't tell you how big this square is because all I did was lay the ball screw and nut on the saddle and then trace an area around it. And... Uh, and start to plunge with the drill press. This is not the most elegant way to get the job done, but it doesn't matter. You're not going for pretty or precise. You're just trying to get material out of the way so that your uh, ball screw nut will fit in between the saddle and the table. If you have an angle grinder or a die grinder or you know a fancy set of steak knives, anything that'll cut metal will work. Uh, it doesn't have to look nice. You're never going to see it again. But uh, I did it with the drill press because, I don't know, it seemed like the easiest <laughs> method at the time. I still had to clean it up with the uh, die grinder, though, because, yeah, it did make a mess. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please post them below. And while you're thinking about it, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on future G0704 CNC conversion videos. Uh, got plenty of more content on the way, so stay tuned. And as always, thanks for watching, guys.